Welcome back. Safer at home may be a good policy to stop the spread of COVID, but it is having some unintended consequences. As I discuss the issue of child abuse and domestic violence with DCF Secretary Chad Popple. And honestly, this is one of the things I'm worried about. Um, you know, every summer when the kids go home from school, our calls to the hotline drop um, pretty steeply. Um, and that's because our teachers who are on the front line working with the kids and see them every day, um, they're not there to notice something and, and make a call into the hotline. And so that's always just, just generally speaking in a normal year, that's a period of time the department is, is extra concerned. But now we have it where you know, we're all social distancing and we're not really interacting with one another very much. So you have the other folks in the community that might see something normally be able to make a call in. And so you know, right now we're seeing a 35% drop in our calls to the child abuse hotline. That's not a good thing. That's not a good statistic for us. Um, we are still, uh, from an investigative standpoint, if we get one of those calls, our investigators are still going to see that child. Um, there's different criteria and statute, but it's either a four hour response time or a 24 hour response time. We are still getting there on time. Um, our CPIs have been, uh, I'm going to use the word brave, very brave. Uh, we've got them PPE. They're going in homes. Um, and you can imagine, you know, how they're anxious as well. Um, about contracting or giving or passing it along the virus to other folks. So we've got PPE for our folks. We're still doing the in-home visits. Um, our caseworkers that work with the children and families after a child comes into, technically comes into the system, um, they are still going in homes. We did get some, uh, some guidance from the federal government that would allow them to do some of those case visits um, you know, tell, uh, through the computer, like we're talking today. And so in, in situations where um, there's a high degree of confidence that the, the child's in a good position, we may have worked with that foster parent you know, for 10 years, we, we have a high confidence level in them. Um, we're able to do some of these visits that reduce some of the interactions on the casework side. But the investigation side, we're still up and running, we're still business as normal. Um, it's just uh, right now we're getting fewer and fewer calls into that hotline. Uh, and it's something that, uh, you know, we just need folks to pay attention. Uh, we are having less interactions with one another, but um, if you have somebody in your family or some a friend and you know they're stressed out and they've had issues in the past, call in and check up on them. If people see something or suspect that a, that a friend or neighbor um, maybe have, have a, there's a child in that house, what is the number that they should call to reach out to? No, thank you for asking that. It's 1-800-962-2873. One eight hundred nine six two two eight seven three. Let's let's turn to domestic violence now for a second. Um, the issue, obviously, you know, when you have people caught in in a house together, you know, under these sort of stressful conditions, you would expect to to see a rise in domestic violence cases. I know police agencies are reporting additional calls when it comes to domestic violence. What are you seeing from from DCF's perspective? when it comes to domestic violence reporting? It's similar to the child abuse situation uh, I referred to earlier. Our, our, our calls to the Florida Domestic Violence Hotline um, are down. That number, by the way, is 1-800-500-1119. Um, and it's another one of those trends we're concerned with. Uh, to your point, um, folks are starting to get stressed out, um, particularly if your financial outlook has, has taken a hit and you've been in, inside a home and can't really go anywhere right now, um, it's, it's not a great situation. And so uh, just like on the child abuse side with teachers, the more we interact with one another in society, that's we're able to see, hmm, something's not right, maybe I should call the hotline. We're not around many folks right now. And so uh, we are concerned. I'll, I'll more just, than just not being around folks, if if I'm a girlfriend or a, or a wife and I'm being abused, if I'm around my husband or boyfriend the entire time locked in a, basically a house yep. and I'm not going out to the store or I'm not leaving to be able to make that phone call, then it's, is, that, is that the reason why you think the numbers are down is because people aren't leaving their homes to be able to report? Absolutely. I, I think it's a combination of all of that, but, but absolutely. When, when are you going to have a moment to grab the phone and, and make the call? Um, and so it's, uh, these are things we are concerned with. I mean, the situation is what it is. I mean, from the pandemic perspective, um, but we do, uh, again, 
we all know somebody, we've got our family, we've got friends, we know folks um, that probably could use a phone call. Um, when we do go outside to go get groceries or whatever it is, you know, paying attention, um, you know, paying attention a little bit more than we, we usually do right now is, is, it would be quite helpful for the children and, and the vulnerable folks in Florida right now. How do you find shelters and what are you doing with regard to shelters at a time when there's supposed to be social distancing and you don't want to necessarily have people congregating? Right now, we don't have any resource issues. So we have, we have a place for you to go. That, that's the first message. So I don't want folks on any one of our systems worried about that. Um, I've got this problem. You know, right now, there's no way somebody can take me in. That is not the case. We can take care of you if you need help. What do you need right now that you don't have? From a resource perspective, we're in great shape. Uh, again, the, the two biggest things I'm concerned about are um, child abuse didn't go away. Domestic violence didn't go away. And, and the, the calls to our hotlines are not there. And so that is my biggest concern. And so something I need, I, I need us to all band together as, as a community um, and keep an eye out, make those phone calls to your friends and family like I was talking about, particularly if somebody's had a problem in the past um, and, and you know about it, check on them um, and then call us. Uh, we're, we are truly here to help and we have the capacity to do it um, and we wanna do it. When we return, the head of Miami's Needle Exchange Program. 